talk about uh, modular invariance in a strongly coupled n equals four. Let me see if I can. So can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Uh, and let me make it full screen if I can. You can still see it? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so I'll talk about um, so modular invariance in strongly coupled n equal four super Yang mills. I'll explain what that um, uh, what strong coupling limit I'll be taking. Um, and um, uh, it's based on the series of papers um, with um, Damon Binder, uh, Shai Chester, uh, Yifan Wang, um, Michael Green, and Song Kao Wen. And I'm very happy that um, Yifan and um, Song Kao are uh, in this uh, uh, talk so they can answer all the questions I, I don't know how to answer. Um, so let me, um, okay. So this talk is about uh, correlation functions of local operators in uh, 4D um, N equal four super Yang Mills theory. Um, and there's, there are many people in this audience who have spent uh, many years working on uh, these, uh, these correlation functions. So I think that for, for this audience, uh, this is probably enough of an introduction. I don't have to to motivate it and um, explain why, why such a thing is interesting. But I want to point out that there are several approaches to, st to studying them. Um, this is an integrability conference. So one approach is integrability, of course. Um, one can also do um, a series expansion at weak coupling. Um, there's also uh, holography at strong coupling. It's usually in the Tuft limit where one takes n to infinity, keeping the Tuft coupling g n null squared n fixed, and then taking lambda, the Tuft coupling to infinity as well. And then there's bootstrap approaches, uh, numerical or analytic. Um, and uh, then there's also supersymmetry and supersymmetric localization. And just to get you oriented in this talk, um, there will be um, a little bit of holography, um, analytic bootstrap, and supersymmetric localization. And it's the supersymmetric localization um, where the, the, the main results that I'm going to present uh, will be coming from. Um, so the most studied, I said local operators, the most studied local operators are, uh, as I'm sure you know, half BPS single trace scalar operators. Um, so these are operators OP um, of dimension, scaling dimension equal to P. Uh, they transform in the um, uh, symmetric rank, rank P traceless symmetric tensor of um, SO6. Um, so um, in this talk, I won't focus, uh, I'll focus only on the simplest one, the one with the lowest P, which is P equal two. Uh, so that operator, uh, I also call it SIJ. And it's um, in terms of the six scalar fields of the N equal four theory is just a trace of XIXJ minus, minus the SO6 trace. Um, and it transforms in the 20 prime representation of um, uh, the R symmetry um, and it has scaling dimension too. And, uh, you know, it's customary to not, um, as Fernando explained, it's customary to not have around these um, indices, SO6 indices, so uh, one usually contracts them with no polarization vectors. So then the object that I'll be talking about is this four point function of four um, of these S operators at different points and with different R symmetry polarizations. One thing I should point out about this operator is that it's in the same superconformal multiplet as the stress energy tensor. And um, in fact, um, uh, computing this correlation function um, is equivalent to computing any correlation function of four operators from this multiplet because the SUSY word identities relate all four point correlators of stress tensor multiplet, multiplet operators. And in fact, they, um, uh, they're all determined by a single function. So uh, let me show you how that works for this SSSS. Well, this is just a consequence of supersymmetry that it can be written as the free part. So this would be the correlation, the correlator that one would have in the free theory. And then there's some kinematic invariant that depends on the positions and also on this R symmetry uh, indices. And then it's all multiplied by some function of U and V. 
in, that I'll call T, and uh, U and V are the conformal invariant cross ratios. So the entire information in this correlator is encoded in a single function, T of U and V. If we know this function, we know the correlator, and the other way around, of course. Um, so uh, part, of, part of the title of the talk um, was about uh, modular invariance. Um, so that refers to the SL2Z duality of n equal four super Yang mills. Uh, so let me uh, briefly mention um, that. Um, so one can define the uh, a complexified gauge coupling as theta over two pi plus four pi i over G Yang mills squared. This is a standard definition and tau bar is its conjugate. So theta is the theta angle and Jiang mills is the Yang mills coupling. And um, then it's been known that the N equal four super Yang mills theory with gauge algebra SUN exhibits an SL2Z duality um, under which the theory is equivalent. Um, so um, uh, this SL2Z duality acts um, by changing the coupling, uh, changing tau to A tau plus B over C tau plus D with A, B, C, D integers and A, D minus B, C being equal to one. Particular cases of this are the S generator. So this is the S duality uh, where tau goes to minus one over tau. So for zero theta angle, what this does is sends G ang mills to one over G ang mills and the T generator that sends tau to tau plus one or theta to theta plus two pi. Um, and this half BPS operator that I mentioned whose four point function we'll be studying um, is um, uh, SL2Z invariant. So the four point function will also be um, SL2Z invariant. Now, a closely related um, uh, topic is um, an SL, the SL2Z duality of superstring theory, of type, type 2B superstring theory. Uh, so in this case, the role of tau is the same duality transformation. The role of tau is played by the um, diloton and uh, the axion, the complexified diloton axion combination. So this is C is at the axion and phi is, is the diloton. And where do we see this? Uh, well, we see it, in, for example, in um, um, uh, scattering amplitudes. So scattering amplitudes receive uh, contributions from like supergravity vertices, as Fernando explained. And also, like the next correction is um, Riemann to the four um, uh, correction. And um, it's been known that uh, this, uh, the Riemann to the four contribution to the scattering amplitude is a function of tau and tau bar. And in fact, it's a uh, non-holomorphic Eisenstein series. And I'll explain in a bit what these Eisenstein series um, uh, are. Um, as I said, it's a closely related topic because there's a connection between the two and the connection, well, Fernando did a good job explaining it. So, I'll, but, but let, me, let me say it again. Uh, so the connection is that uh, through ADS CFT, uh, the CFT um, uh, four point function uh, can be uh, thought of as, uh, as a scattering amplitude in anti sitter space. Uh, and in particular, the quantity that's um, analogous to the scattering amplitude is this Mellon amplitude that Fernando um, talked about. Um, and so this is like the scattering amplitude in anti sitter space. And how is this related to the scattering amplitude in flat space? Well, one can just take the radius of ADS to infinity, and then it would be um, this would become the scattering amplitude in flat space. Scattering of what? Well, scattering of whatever particles we have in in ten dimensions, which are the gravitons and their superpartners, massless particles. So um, the precise connection is, is uh, that one can take the large if if we have the Mellon amplitude. I'll write down the def, the, the formula for the Mellon amplitude in a bit. Uh, and if we take the large S and T limit, then one simply gets the scattering amplitude of gravitons and their superpartners in um, in ten dimensions. Um, so uh, therefore, one would expect these Eisenstein series to also appear um, in the formulas for the correlation functions. But um, in order to exhibit uh, this SL2Z duality in n equal four super Yang mills, and also to stay in the holographic regime where we have this connection uh, with, uh, with the 10 dimension uh, superstring theory scattering, um, we cannot take the, the 
the usual TOF limit, because in the usual TOF limit, n is taken to infinity while lambda is kept fixed. So what that means is that GN mills goes to zero. Now, if you recall, the S duality transformation on GN mills sends GN mills to one over GN mills. So that takes you away from this limit. Therefore, one should consider a slightly different limit that I'll call the very strong coupling limit, where n is taken to infinity while GN mills is fixed. So in this limit, the tooth coupling, GML squared N also would go to infinity automatically. Um, so uh, what does the four point function that I mentioned look like in this limit um, where N is taken to infinity and tau is kept, tau and tau bar are kept fixed. Uh, so in this normalization, which I think is sort of natural where the two point function of this S operator scales like N squared, this is sort of different from the normalization that um, uh, Fernando was using for his operators. Um, so in this limit, the connected uh, four-point function um, has an expansion in uh, one over n, and the coefficients are, are functions of, uh, could be functions of tau and tau bar, the coupling. So the first term is a border n squared. Uh, so this is just a schematic uh, um, expression. Uh, I suppressed all the position dependence and the R symmetry indices. So the first term is a border n squared, and this corresponds to um, supergravity uh, exchanges. Uh, the next term, uh, so I, I wrote it down here, the, the, the next term um, goes like square root of n, and this is the contribution from an interaction with a Riemann to the four vertex. Uh, the next term is the regularized one loop supergravity amplitude, and then the next term um, goes like one over square root of n, corresponds to tree level, uh, tree level contact interaction with a d to the four, r to the four, so that's four derivatives and four Riemann tensors acting on four Riemann tensors, that's the interaction vertex. And then the next one, uh, one over n is uh, d to the six r to the four um, and, and so on. Uh, to figure out what powers of n exactly appears here, you should just recall the ADS-CFT dictionary where the radius of ADS goes like lambda to the one quarter. In terms of n, this would be n to the one quarter. So that means that if we have n derivatives, that's like one over the radius of the ADS to the power n, so those would be suppressed by n to the power um, n, little n over four. So what this means, for instance, if we compare the first two, is that, so r to the, Riemann to the fourth has eight derivatives, uh, Einstein gravity has two derivatives, so this has six more derivatives, therefore this term here should be suppressed by n to the power minus six over four, and that's minus three halves, so indeed square root of n is smaller than um, n squared by this factor of n to the three halves. Um, so uh, the interesting thing is that the highlighted terms, the ones that I wrote down up to here, up to one over n, are actually known right now. Um, so they have been completely determined, including their position dependence. Uh, so of course, for the supergravity terms, there's been work in the late 90s. Um, and then um, for, for the next one, um, um, well, the, the, se the session chair, <laughs> Uh, uh, worked on this a while ago, um, and then we, we reproduce that, that answer from a, from a diff different uh, perspective that I'll explain. And um, n to the zero, that's the one loop amplitude, uh, Fernando and collaborators, Miese and collaborators have, have, have worked on this. And then the n to the minus a half and n to the minus one, um, um, well, uh, we, we um, uh, Finish that in, in our most recent paper. Okay, so what is the uh, what is the procedure? So uh, the procedure is that supersymmetric word identities, together with crossing symmetry and analyticity in Mellon space, um, uh, determine the position dependence uh, of the four-point function um, at each order in one over n up to a few undetermined constants. So in particular, I can tell you that. This one's determined up to one constant. This one, for instance, determined up to two constants. This one's determined up to three constants and so on. Number of constants grows with the, with the order. And then um, part of the procedure was to uh, use supersymmetric localization results, uh, which give, as I'll explain, uh, integrated uh, four point functions. And they can be used to determine these constants. And, uh, um, so that's, that's one way to determine the constants. And another way to determine the constants is to use the flat space limit, which can be used to fix only the leading large 
ST behavior at each order in one over N. So if we have the flat space limit and two supersymmetric localization results, we can fix the correlator up to the order that I mentioned, and that's exactly how we fix. Um, so, okay, so what is the answer? As I said, the answer looks easier, uh, looks simpler in Mellon space. So one can go from this function T to a function uh, M of S and T. And this is the precise formula. So, you know, if we know T, we can compute M. If we know M, we can compute T. This function of M of S and T has um, uh, nicer, nicer properties. It's easier to do this in, in Mellon space. So here the Mellon space variables are S, T, and U. Um, and uh, the U is related to S and T is four minus S minus T. Um, and if we just take the flat space limit, these would become the Mandelstam uh, variables. Okay, so I said that we know what the correlator is, so I can just tell you what it is um, up, to, up, to, up to that order. So in Mellon space, it looks very simple. Um, so um, the leading term goes like n squared, um, and there's some, um, uh, it's one over s minus two, one over t minus two, one over u minus two. The next term, um, so this is the supergravity um, exchange contribution to the four point function. Uh, the next term corresponds to the contribution of this Riemann to the fourth, which in Mellon space is now just a constant. Then there's a one loop term uh, uh, that I, I won't talk about. Uh, oh, and by the way, this, so this one depends non-trivially on tau and tau bar. It has this um, Eisenstein uh, series that also appears in the flat space scattering amplitude. So that's not that surprising since it's, it's the only term we can write down. We can take the flat space limit. We should get the E3 halves uh, from the flat space scattering amplitudes. Um, and then the next term here, uh, the one in green, is corresponds to d to the four r to the four, so it's proportional to some um, other Eisenstein series e five halves. Um, and then the next term, um, the course, this comes from d to the six r to the four, uh, uh, proportional to a more complicated modular function that I'll explain in a bit. So these modular invariants, all three of them. Um, are known or expected um, from uh, superstring scattering amplitudes. But what this argument gives, it just gives, it's just the flat space limit. So it, it says that the leading term at each order in one over n, the term that has the largest power of S, T, and U should be proportional to these modular invariants. It does not say anything about the subleading terms. So our result is, um, uh, set, is what I, I think it's a, little, it's a little surprising in some ways, um, which is that also the subleading term, so this minus three is multiplied by the exact same modular invariant as S squared plus D squared plus U squared, as well as you know, this term here that's quadratic and the term that goes like a constant, it's proportional to this exact same modular invariant that appears um, a leading order. So this appears in a flat space scattering amplitudes. Um, so, okay, so what are these modular functions? So the non-holomorphic Eisenstein series have some index R and they're functions of tau and tau bar. And they're defined by this expression as just an infinite sum. Um, so here um, I'll, be, uh, I'll be writing tau as tau one plus I tau two. So tau one is the real part, tau two is the imaginary part of, of tau. So tau one is related to the theta angle and tau two to the theta angle's coupling. And um, so this is just uh, sum over integers except zero, zero, pairs of integers of this quantity. Uh, this function is invariant under, under SL2Z transformations. Another way to think about these functions is that there are eigenfunctions of the hyperbolic Laplacian in the tau tau bar plane, um, well, up, upper half plane. Um, this is the hyperbolic Laplacian, and um, this is the eigenvalue. So these functions E are eigenfunctions with this particular eigenvalue uh, that are normalized uh, uh, in a certain way, such that at large tau two, they behave like this. It's just a normalization condition. Uh, to give you a little intuition about them, um, if we expand them at large tau two, large tau two means small Giang mills because tau two was four pi over Giang mills squared. There's a finite number of perturbative contributions as well as non-perturbative contributions. So this is sort of reminiscent of like Risha's talk from Monday where it was a finite number of perturbative contributions and then non-perturbative contributions. So this is, for example, when the theta angle is zero, tau two is four pi over gm mill squared. So this E3 halves uh, function that appears at the coefficient of Riemann to the fourth 
has two perturbative contributions, so two power behave terms in GN mills. And then these are non perturbative terms that go like e to the minus something over GN mills squared. Um, and uh, but the something, whatever multiplies this exponent also has a power series expansion in one over tau two. Um, all right, so these are the Eisenstein series. Now we also had this more complicated modular invariants, which were the generalized Eisenstein series. So this was the first one was the co well, the only one I showed you is the, the coefficient of one over n, which is comes from a contact d to the six r to the four interaction, uh, d to the six r to the four interaction. So it's this, um, and I called it this. Um, so this one has three indices. Um, um, so I'll call one, one of them, the first one will be r and then s1 and s2. So for a general r, s1 and s2, such that r is bigger than s1 plus s2, one can define a generalized Eisenstein series as the unique SL2Z invariant solution of now not an eigenvalue equation, but an inhomogeneous eigenvalue equation where there's a source on, on one side. Well, it's not an eigenvalue equation. Um, it's, it has a source on the, on the right-hand side. So, but the left-hand side looks the same thing as the left-hand side of the eigenvalue equation. So it's the hyperbolic Laplacian. This would be like the eigenvalue R times R plus one, but on the right-hand side, we don't have zero. We have instead a product of two Eisenstein series of indices S1 and S2. And if we require a certain growth at, at large tau two, then there's a unique solution. So this is this um, modular invariant that appears um, at order one over n. And this also has, um, if we expand large tau two, this also has a finite number of perturbative corrections and then an infinite number of non-perturbative corrections. So the, the power behave terms, now there's more of them, there's five of them, although in some cases, some of the powers would coincide and then um, there, there's fewer. Um, but this is, uh, this, is this, um, this Eisenstein series. The reason why I defined it more generally is that this will appear in, in, in a bit again. Um, so as I said, the, um, um, most of our results come from the supersymmetric localization procedure. Uh, so let me say um, how, how that uh, goes. So we're interested in studying the n equal four super Yang mills theory on flat space. Uh, well, it's a conformal field, field theory, so we can map it to a round sphere, and then we can deform it um, by preserving supersymmetry. So there's two deformations one can consider by a mass or uh, squashing, we can squash the sphere. Um, so if the squashing parameter is one and the mass is zero, this is just the n equal four super Yang mills that's undeformed. And the point is that one can compute the partition function exactly uh, using supersymmetric localization. And there's two messages that I wanna send about this. Uh, the first message is that derivatives of this partition function with respect to the parameters m, b, tau, and tau bar evaluated at b, b and m being b being one and m being zero give integrated correlation functions in n equal four super Yang mills can be interpreted as integrated correlation functions. So if we want a four point function, we need to take four derivatives. Um, and the other message is that we can obtain all these Eisenstein series and generalize Eisenstein series um, by expanding this, these partition function in the very strong coupling limit where we take n to infinity and keep tau and tau bar fixed. You have five minutes now. Okay, thank you. I might need a few, a few more minutes uh, past the five. Um, so um, uh, let me say what, what kind of derivative. So the, for now, I'm not gonna consider the derivatives with respect to the squashing. I, we can talk about those uh, later. Um, those are harder to, to think about. Uh, but if we just take derivatives with respect to M and the coupling, so we can take two derivatives with respect to M and one with respect to tau, one with respect to tau bar. So what is this? This can be computed using supersymmetric localization. And in terms of the correlation function that I mentioned before, in terms of this function of T, of T of U and V, is given by this integral. So we evaluate, we write u as uh, one plus r squared minus two r cosine theta and v as r squared, and then we integrate over r and theta with this measure. And that's supposed to reproduce um, this. And um, there's another relation that we derived for four derivatives. Uh, it's a little more complicated. Um, it's still an integral of this function t of u and v, but with, with a more complicated measure. 
And this measure here um, is this D bar one, 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 one function, which is proportional to the uh, Witten diagram for a contact interaction of a dimension one of dimension one scalar operators. But this has nothing, the appearance of this function has nothing to do with holography because these results just hold even away from the holographic regime. They hold at any N and any coupling. Um, okay, so how do we use them? Well, we, we know what this is from localization. So this imposes a constraint on this function T of U and V. So um, that's, that's the way to use it. Now, uh, Pestun computed the S4 partition function for this theory, uh, the mass deformed n equal four theory also named, called n equal two star. So there's some um, uh, factor here. So there's some classical contribution. There's some one loop contribution that involves some fun function H that's a product of two bars G functions. And then there's some instanton contributions. So these are the instantons on S4 that are localized either at the North Pole or the, or the South Pole. Um, so perturbatively in one over N and one over Lambda. So if we were in the tooth limit um, or perturbatively in GN mills, um, um, one can ignore the instanton contributions, but they are very important in the strong coupling limit that I mentioned. And taking derivatives, um, um, uh, so now how do we take derivatives of this function? Uh, so uh, taking derivatives uh, with respect to M, tau and tau bar, and then we evaluate them at M equals zero, um, that gives, um, uh, that can be interpreted as certain insertions in a Hermitian matrix model, because when we set M to zero, uh, then this is just becomes, uh, the instanton factor goes away, and this is just a Hermitian matrix model. Now, of course, when we take these derivatives, we're going to get insertions of pretty comp We need to have to compute expectation values of pretty complicated functions of, of the AIs in this Hermitian matrix model. Um, but, um, and and we, we haven't been able to compute them in full generality. We can just do it in various limits, but in enough limits so that we can figure out what the answer is. Uh, so let me just tell you what the, what the answer is, um, and then I'll finish. So for this first one, two, two derivatives with respect to M, one with, uh, with respect to tau, one with respect to tau bar, one can show that the mass derivatives act uh, either and both of them on this, these functions H. Um, and because the H, the H functions are complicated, these terms are harder to compute. Um, or they can act both on the instanton factors, and these are some, somewhat easier to compute, but we, they have to be computed instanton sector by instanton sector. So one instanton, two instantons, three instantons, and so on. But from those answers, we put together this, uh, this, uh, this answer. Uh, so this is the supergravity contribution. This is proportional to n squared. This thing proportional to the next one, proportional to square root of n. It's proportional to the Eisenstein series that we expect. The next one is proportional to also the Eisenstein series that we expect at d to the four to the four. Uh, it's Eisenstein at five halves. Then surprisingly, there's no one over n term. It's just um, odd powers of um, one over square root of n. But um, these are, um, th that's probably due to supersymmetry. But as you can see, at all higher orders in one over n, uh, there's more and more Eisenstein linear combinations of Eisenstein series. So the four point function, at least this integrated four point function uh, has, has the structure where it's just Eisenstein series all the way. Um, so now let me show you what the other one is where we take four derivatives with respect to the mass. This is much harder to compute because the mass derivatives can act on the different factors, either on these H functions or on the instanton factors. Um, but we gathered enough evidence to show that uh, the uh, expansion takes this form the leading order, it's again, something proportional to n squared. This is a supergravity contribution, d to the four to the four proportional to the three halves. Then one, a square, order square, one over square root of n, we have this other uh, Eisenstein series from d to the four to the four. Then we recover at order one over n, we recover the uh, generalized Eisenstein series that appears in d to the six r to the four um, in superstring scattering amplitudes. And then from then on, there are terms that go like half integer powers of uh, one over um, um, uh, n and integer powers of one over n. All the half integer powers of one over n can be written in terms of regular Eisenstein series. And all the integer powers in one over n can be written in terms of these generalized Eisenstein series. And uh, we computed it up to, some, up to some order. These constants here are given in the paper. 
Um, so as I said, so Eisenstein series at odd, odd orders in one over squared of n generalized uh, Eisenstein series even order in one over squared of n. So let me make a few comments and then I'll conclude. So the first comment is up to order one over n, the two integrated correlators that I showed you plus the flat space limit are sufficient to determine the entire um, SSSS correlator of separated points. So that includes the position dependence. Um, the next point is that um, the coefficients for the first two orders, uh, so uh, square root of n and one over square root of n can be determined entirely uh, from localization because they're all from the consistency condition, there are only two constants that need to be fixed. So they can bo both be fixed from localization. And then one can take the flat space limit and see that they agree with a superstring scattering amplitude. So I view, the, view this as a precision test of ADS-CFT beyond supergravity, so, you know, even non-perturbative orders <laughs> in, uh, in uh, uh, the coupling. Um, and um, it's not just, as Fernando pointed out, it's not just this uh, particular correlation function. Um, from it, one can extract uh, various CFT data. So all of the CFT data will have, will have the same structure. So for instance, um, we can compute the anomalous dimension of a double trace operator, SIJ, SIJ, which will have the structure where, uh, you know, first the supergravity contribution and then uh, R to the four that's proportional to this Eisenstein series and this, you know, one over n to the four, one n to the nine halves is proportional to this other Eisenstein series and, and general Eisenstein series. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, and th these numbers can be computed from the formulas we have for the, for the correlation function. And lastly, let me comment on the relation between this very strong coupling expansion and the usual Toft expansion. Uh, the relation is simple. So if we, in this very strong coupling expansion, we collect all the terms that go like n squared times g n mills squared times n to some power, then those will be the terms um, that in the tooth limit uh, will become the planar terms and so on. Um, so it's just a reorganization of that, of, of the expansion. So let me conclude. So a combination of techniques, supersymmetric localization, analytic bootstrap in melon space and so on can be used to study holographic correlators beyond the supergravity approximation in n equal four supergravity melt and also in other theories. And what I showed you is that in the very strong coupling limit, the n equal four supergravity melt correlators can be written in terms of Eisenstein series and um, generalized uh, Eisenstein series, at least the um, integrated ones all the way uh, to all the orders in one over n and um, uh, well, at separated points, we only know that up to order one over n. So questions for the future, this is an integrability conference. So what does this have to do? What is the connection with integrability? Uh, this is a question I want to ask the audience. Um, and uh, another, another direction would be that these integ integrated constraints hold at any value of, of any coupling and at any n. Um, so they, they could be used away from the strong coupling limit. So for, for instance, in numerical bootstrap studies. And the other, the other topic that we sort of started thinking about, but I don't have anything to say, is the convergence or resummation properties of this one over n expansion, at least for these integrated correlators. Um, so that, that's, um, oh, the, thank you very much. So thanks for the very nice talk. Uh, I guess we have time for the one question and further questions can be asked in the discussion session. May I ask a question? Sure. Uh, so you, you can tell quite a lot about instantons and n equals four at strong coupling. Can you compare to d instantons and ADS? Um, from these results, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you, you're asking what the, can you compare to with d instantons in ADS? It's natural to assume that uh, instantons map to the instantons, but uh, um, maybe it's even not correct um, correct assumption. I guess your your non perturbative corrections, right? They should should come from the instantons. In the they should come from the instantons. Yeah, I I, I don't know of any ADS computation that 
Maybe I can make a comment. So, so indeed, naturally, we expect the desentons to correspond in the ADS to correspond to the gauge theory desenton effects in the field theory. But computing the desenton effects actually in flat space are already very tricky. I mean, the original paper from uh, Green and Gupperer, I mean, they fixed in some contribution to the leading degree of order, like R to the fourth, up to some overall coefficient. So mm -hmm. that fixing that overall coefficients are already very tricky. And do the similar computation in ADS5 and S5 following the same method is much more difficult. Yeah, although the structure, you know it because it also has to be a solution of crossing. So I think for the one instant on, you still get this T1111 function. So some mm -hmm. DBAR function. Mm -hmm. That's right. But the coefficient, yeah, the, the coefficient position is, hard, yeah. is very simple. But the, the, the tricky thing is the overall constants that's multiplying, you know, e, e to the minus 2 pi uh, tau 2. Right. Yeah. And then also the subleading corrections that are perturbative in tau two. But it's, it's a very interesting problem. Um, there's, a, there's another uh, potential method uh, approach to attack this problem using durability, which I can say some things in the discussion section. I see that uh, David Agayoto has a question. Hi. Uh, so do you happen to know what is the range of values that these Eisenstein functions can take? Meaning, are these corrections bounded from above somehow, or is there, you know, the most? I, I actually don't know. Uh, I, I think they take the, the so we studied them uh, uh, with Agnese a few years ago. And I think their max, so first of all, you can have a look at the extension around the cusp. Uh, and I think they, you can see that they diverge at the cusp. And then their minimum value they are extremized at the self-dual points. And, and you can look at the point at the self-dual point gamma two and gamma three, and they are extremized at the point gamma three. So e to the i pi over three. Thank you. I see, so they have a minimum there or? Right, so they have a minimum there. Uh, and you can see that, that uh, numerically for, for a mm -hmm. few examples, you can see that their minimum is, is in that point. Yeah, I guess I never plotted them. <laughs> but this is for this is also true for the for the generalized Eisenstein series. No, no, we just tried for a few ones. Uh, okay, and, and and it always happened that at that point it it was. It's very funny. Like there are two extrema, so mm -hmm. one is in one self dual point, the other is in the other one. But mm -hmm. the point gamma three always seems to be the the global one. Uh, which which uh, which 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 ones did you try? It, it, uh, well, I don't, it was many years ago, but I think- Like three half, five half? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. I mean, of, co it, of, co yeah. of course, the fact that they're extremized at the, uh, the self-dual points, that's just the consequence of them being SL2Z so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I remember that the one at e to the i pi over three was the, the global one. Was the global one, I see. Yeah, that's- uh, For some reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, move on to the discussion ses session. Um, okay.